The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I've only ever finished the game of Monopoly one time in my entire life. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. The version that we played is from a place that we used to live, Anna Maria Island. My parents got it for us as a family as a Christmas gift this last year. And in between Christmas and New Year's, I sat down with my oldest and my youngest child to play the game. I usually give up pretty early when I play Monopoly. After about an hour, hour and a half, I'm either losing or the game has gotten so boring that I just don't want to play any longer. But this time, this time I was winning big. I even let the two girls that I was playing with Again, my oldest and my youngest daughter, I even let them have a stimulus check a few times just so that they could get more money so that I could take it and buy more properties. By the end of the game, I literally owned every single piece of property on the entire board. When it was said and done, such a thorough whooping had never been seen before. And now I'm pretty sure that I'm going to retire. Not going to play Monopoly ever again. I've decided I'm going out on top. Today, the gospel foreshadows the thorough whooping that God is going to achieve against sin and death. When Jesus is baptized, we see God setting up the board. The Holy Spirit rolls the highest number and begins the game, sending Jesus directly out into the game for the salvation of God's people. Jesus lands in the wilderness for 40 days. The battle has engaged. They are going to play the game, Jesus and Satan for as long as it takes. Satan gets crafty, tries to trick Jesus to tempt him and fool him, but thank God Jesus doesn't fall for the devil's tricks, his manipulation. Jesus is smarter than the trickster. And Jesus has got something up his sleeve too. Jesus has the angels with him who are waiting on him hand and foot. Jesus is not alone in this. We watch Satan tempt Jesus, but through it, we are given a glimpse of the future. Satan loses today in the wilderness. Tricked, we find out, into playing a game that he cannot win. And... By the end, he's going to lose everything. Jesus being tempted in the wilderness is just the beginning of the story. It's just the beginning of the game unfolding in front of our very eyes. 
They haven't even passed go for the first time and collected the $200. And it's going to last a lot longer, this game, than anybody thought possible. 2,000 years or so at this point. In the story, we are reminded right away of how good a player Satan really is at this game. We see that he has defeated John the Baptist, who now sits in jail, unable to roll the dice and free himself. Eventually, we know as the story goes on that John is even going to be beheaded, losing clearly to the powers of evil. And we begin to wonder, as we start to watch this story, this game unfold, if we're the smart ones choosing the underdog. Because the thing is, Satan has never won before. There has never been a champion that has come to this battle, to this game, and ever won against Satan before. And so we have to ask ourselves, what's so special about this Jesus character? How long is Jesus going to be able to play this game? What makes us think that the world champion, Satan, can be defeated by anybody? Satan does believe, as this game begins, that he is going to win. But we know better. We have already seen the ending promised to us in Holy Scripture. By the end, Jesus speaks one last word and the game is over. Revelation gives us that insight. Not even death. Not even death, Satan's ultimate trick up his sleeve, can beat Jesus like it did John or anyone before him. To the world's surprise, the world champion is about to go down through a thorough whooping. We watch the first match in the wilderness, and Jesus wins. We watch the second match on the cross, and Jesus wins. There is no real competition here between God and Satan. They are not equal opponents, like some may assume. Satan has met his match, or even his better. Satan's going to lose heart. This game might be going on for far longer than any game of Monopoly we've ever played, but in the end, there is only one outcome. God wins. Like Monopoly, this game takes longer than anybody really wants. But the game only continues. The game only continues so that by the end, God will truly have control over every inch of the board. Like me, play a Monopoly with my kids. Jesus, too, gets a little cocky in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus enters into this game talking trash against his opponent, against the powers of evil, Jesus shows up and his very first words out of his mouth are a brag about the victory that is coming, the kingdom of heaven onto the face of the earth, how everything's going to finally change. Just you watch and see now that the champion has arrived. He says it with his very first words. Mark 1.15, and I paraphrase, but he tells us that this world has a new dynasty. This world has a new champion in Jesus Christ. And Jesus proves to us today, as he wins this first battle against Satan out in the wilderness, it is a foreshadowing of everything that is going to come. We learn that our great champion, our grand champion has arrived, that Satan will be defeated. And it is going to be a thorough whooping. This, as it unfolds, is going to be fun to watch. 
Amen.